Hey guys, welcome to the X-Ring. Thanks for joining in. Got something new in the bag here, working on the long range game and uh, some different builds. And so what we've got here is something I think is pretty darn cool. Just finished this up. I'm gonna walk in a little closer. So guys, this is not the same rifle that you saw the other day, the PBR. This is actually a completely different rifle. Uh, just got done putting everything together. Uh, but what it is, it's a 6.5 Creedmoor. It has a Stiller Precision, um, the Spectre Action. Has an AMU contour barrel. It is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, but it's got some really cool accoutrements on here. So what we've got is this is the area 419 Hellfire muzzle brake. And what's really cool with this is you can time it yourself. You just screw the collar on, you unscrew this, you get it timed right, and then screw it back on. Should be good to go. Never shot one of these before. It's supposed to help mitigate recoil. So we're going to try that out. Also, we've got the Manners Precision. Uh, or the Manners stock. Uh, this is the G2 uh, mini chassis. And so what it does, it allows you to go to a box system. This is, I'm gonna let you guys take a look at that uh, carbon fiber weave in there. Has the adjustable cheek piece. It does have the Area 419 Arca Swiss rail. This is the 14 inch. A lot of you guys might say, well, why do you have it extended out? A lot of guys will run this a little longer. Uh, they do offer it in a uh, 12 inch. I believe this is a 14 and a half but that way they can get the bipod out here a little further. It also has the barricade stop here. So if I wanted to pull it up against something or flip it around, I could turn around the other way. And you also have a barricade stop right there. This is topped off with a Vortex, the Razor HD four and a half to 27. It does have the Vortex precision rings. This one has the EBR 2C reticle. I've not fired this. So let's get this thing on paper. Let's see how it does. I'm looking forward to something that might be a really good shooter. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, so I just bore sighted it just by looking through the bore and then through the scope. I should be on paper with the first shot. But one of the most important things with the precision rifle is getting set up on the rifle the same way every time and getting that spot weld or that cheek weld right. So what I usually do is, and guys, this is very, very important, is what I will do is I will get in here and I will look. Now, right now, I've got a lot of black at the bottom, so I need to come up. And what I'm looking for is that eye relief, but also being able to get the height right. I, I set this on the bone, on the cheekbone, and if I'm too high, I want to see black at the top. So what I want to do is I want to find it where that black is perfect, just like that. And she's tightened in. I also run a slight cant. I don't know if you guys can see this from the rear, but it is adjustable for the cant left and right. So I've got it canted a little to the left, but when I put that cheek on there, it is spot on. I am not seeing any black up, down, left, right. However, the problem with this is if you're sharing a rifle with someone, let's say you've got a sniper spotter set up or something like that, if your partner has to shoot this, everyone's cheekbones are gonna be a little different and he might not be able to be able to get low enough to be able to see through your scope. So if you're gonna be sharing the rifle or if you're paired up with someone, make sure that this is adjusted so that both of you can see it. But for accuracy and being able to just get those basically same whole groups you're going to need to get that set up so get that set up first let's see what it looks like on paper all right guys so this uses the ai mags this is one of the uh, ones by accurate mag i've never used these before uh, usually using the ais or the mag pulls they all work really well but um, like i said this has never been fired so let's see what we can get as far as a group or at least get it on paper first and then we'll go from there we'll also pay attention to this muzzle break and see how effective it is Okay, so it's on the paper, but it's really far right. It's one and a half mils right. So I need to go one and a half mils left. So I'm gonna go left. There's one and a half mils. And let's see if this next one's pretty close. All right, looks good. Windage is perfect. It's a little high. I've got my zero stop set on this. And I need to go down a little more, but I can't until I take the zero stop out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to shoot a group, and we'll go from there. A group now. I've got a camera down range. I'll bring it up here. And here we go. We'll do a three or four shot group. Hopefully this thing does well.
That's in the pasty. Touching. You know what? I'm going to break my spot weld. It's a great three shot group. All shots are touching. Let's go ahead and make it a five shot group. I always prefer five shots over three. Ten's even better. But like I said, this is a brand new setup, brand new build. So let's see what we can hold. All right, guys, all five shots are within the pasty. It's a great looking group. This is a freaking shooter. I'll also tell you that that Hellfire muzzle brake by Area 419, great, great at mitigating recoil. I might have to purchase another one of those. And um, like I said, this was something that was thrown together. I'm not gonna say just thrown together. This is a nice, nice build. You know, a stock like this with all of the, um, the Area 419 Arca Swiss rails and everything else, you're looking at about, 1300 ish dollars just for the chassis system and then you've got an action which is going to run you anywhere from a thousand about eleven hundred dollars depending on if you go with like a stiller or maybe a defiance or something like that then this is a bartland barrel and the barrel is going to run you four to five hundred dollars so if you start adding it up it starts adding up pretty quickly but this is a darn shooter this thing is set up nice what we're going to do is i've got rick with is your six covered here we're going to play some battleship and we'll see who can win we shot that group for you just now. Now, what I want you to notice is I've got three shots here on the left. That was the first three shots. Once I broke that cheek weld and I got back on the rifle, just that little bit, you can see. Now, we were at 100 yards, but it shifted over. And that's just because my head wasn't exactly right on that. I've got to have some more time on that rifle. Like I said, this is brand new. But that is why that cheek weld is so important. If you've got to duplicate and you want the tightest groups you can, you've got to maintain that cheek weld and not come off the gun when you're working the bolt or anything like that. And that's how you can get these really tight, tight groups. Uh, if I wouldn't have come off the cheek weld and I would have stayed with five mags, five rounds in the mag, there's no doubt in my mind that I would have had five shots right there on that left side. So that's something to take, uh, keep in mind anytime you're trying to get those really, really tight groups. All right, guys, one of the things I wanted to talk about was this barricade stop. I want you to see that. See how this is radiused? And this is by Area 419. So a lot of times you'll have a position or somewhere you have to shoot off of a support or something like that. If I were shooting on this, I don't want to just rest my rifle on the table. What I want to do is be able to press into something like this, and you see those teeth are grabbing. With it being radiused, I can rotate around like this. Now, I can make a pretty solid shot here, but I need to fill that void, and that's where those bags come in. So I can get something like this, like a pump pillow, and depending if I'm gonna drop the knee, if I wanna go you know, high knee or low knee, um, I can get locked in pretty darn well on a position. I mean, this is darn stable. I could take a precision shot like that, but what's nice about this barricade stop is you, know, you can move these around for different positions. You can also block things in. So if you had a two by four, you wanted to lock it in, I could take this, flip it around, cinch it up. Now I've really got it locked in between these two spots right here. So that's what a barricade stop will help you do. one in the bowl. What did you think about pulling that trigger for the first time? It's a nice trigger. The muzzle brake, how effective? Very effective actually. Lot, uh, very light recoil. Okay.
I'll see you. Is your thumb touching the barrel? Not now. Guys, you see how I called him out on that? He took his thumb and he put it on top of the barrel. I try not to do anything that affects barrel harmonics. Alright guys, so all I need is one more round to win. And because uh, tripods are a very effective thing, this, this is one of the really right stuffs. Uh, it's got the Amble 30 ball head on there with the Arca Swiss Picatinny uh, attachment. Um, I use this quite a bit, and this is really lightweight. They are expensive. They're about $1,500. I did a full review on it. Uh, however, what you can do is you can put your Arca Swiss rail on here like this. And I try to get it to a good balance point, which right there, man, that is just crazy balanced. So I've got it locked in. And then what I can do is I can use this thumb lever for my resistance, okay? And I can lock that thing in. It's not really going anywhere at all. Typically, I wouldn't have a leg here like this, but because I've got this, uh, this drop over here, I only need one more round to win. Let's see if I can do it off the tripod. And we'll give him an opportunity to do this as well. So I've got it locked in on the target. I'm going to zoom down. He likes to zoom in quite a bit. And this is actually a really tough position to be doing a pinpoint shot. Money bucket. <laughs> That's it. I sunk two of his battleships. That's a fact. You liked that, didn't you? All right, guys. So, you know, I've talked a lot about precision rifle shooting and everything else. It really doesn't matter what you're shooting, whether it's an Ruger RPR or something like that. Those are great rifles, and ultimately it's going to come down to the shooter and how you apply the principles and the fundamentals and getting a good foundation on shooting and shooting solidly. So I'm not one of these gear whores where I'm like, you know, you got to have this, you got to have this, you know this AI or this surgeon or anything like that. You know, I've seen a ton of guys get beat with people shooting Rugers or Ruger Americans or things like that. It's gonna always come down to the shooter. It's always the Indian, not the arrow, but uh, good equipment does help. So I hope you guys like this review of this, uh, this setup here. Uh, this is gonna be a really, really good rifle. I hope to take it on the long range and uh, maybe do a review of that in a week or two. A lot of things going on. It's a busy year. It's hard for me to do any shooting this year, this time right now, but uh, a lot of traveling, so. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Big thanks to Cobalt Kinetics. Big thanks to Microtech Knives, Palmetto State Armory. I've got a review of a 224 Valkyrie coming up soon, and then I also want to review some of those um, Fix It sticks. Use those to put this thing together. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.